Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers to giving me the opportunity to give this talk. Uh, so this will be about Danzig Wolf reformulations for the stable set problem, and this is joint work with my supervisor Marco Lübbecke. So uh, we start in the same setting as before. So we have this integer linear program. Uh, we maximize this objective function C transpose x, and here we have a constraint for each index in this index set i, uh, and we will have finite bounds on the variables. And what we are interested in is this convex hull of integer feasible solutions. So here we have just uh, all in, uh, the convex hull of all integer solutions, and I will denote this with this PIP. And normally we would start to solve the LP relaxation, and then we would obtain this, uh, we would optimize over this set PLP, which is just the set of LP feasible solutions to this problem. <coughs> in Danzig Wolf reformulation, we we reformulate our problem, and we do this by choosing a subset of the constraints. So in this setting, we choose a subset, a subset i prime of this index set i, and we define this set x of i prime as the convex hull of all integer solutions uh, satisfying the constraints with index in i prime. And what we normally would do is we would uh, reformulate every solution of this set x of i prime uh, as a convex combination of extreme points. So this is why we assume that we have finite upper and lower bounds, so we don't have to care about uh, extreme rays. And normally we would, okay, then introduce uh, one variable for extreme point and uh, obtain a new formulation for the problem. Um, but what actually happens there is that we somehow convexify the constraints that have been indexed in R prime. So when we optimize um, this uh, when we solve the LP re relaxation of, of this reformulated problem, uh, we optimize basically over, over this set, which is the set of fractional solutions, um, where we satisfy the constraints which are not in I prime, so this is this blue part. And additionally, since X is a convex combination of extreme points of this set X of I prime, X is in this convex hull. Okay, so if you don't know what, what Danzig Wolf information basic uh, is, we want to analyze the strength of this polytope, with a, which I will call Danzig Wolf polytope. And the background is that for some, problem, uh, for some problems, this works very well in practice. So when, when you have this extended formulation, you, you can solve the, the LP relaxation with column generation and, and the whole problem with branch and price. And for some problems, it, it works very well. Uh, in practice, and so this is what's going on in, in this small figure. So, so we have chosen our, our subset of the constraints, and here are the other constraints. And okay, the convex hull of integer feasible solutions is not just the convex hull of those three points, and all LP feasible solutions are in this light purple area. And what we what we did is we uh, we convexify here the the constraints with index in I prime. So we look at the convex hull of integer feasible solutions satisfying those constraints with index in I prime. And additionally, we have had, had this blue part, so our solution should also satisfy the, the blue constraints. So then we, we have this polyhedron, which is this Danzig wolf polytope, which I was talking about, which obviously uh, yeah, depends on this set I prime and is potentially stronger or uh, is at least contained in this uh, set of LP feasible solutions. So we have this inclusion relation. The convex hull is still uh, contained in this Danzig Wolf polytope. And we uh, are interested in, oh, first of all, okay, of course, when you convexify none of the constraints, you still have the same uh, polytope. And if you convexify all the constraints, then you obtain the integer hull. And we're interested in in investigating the strength of such reformulations. So we want to know when is this Danzig Wolf polytope equal to the, the, set of, uh, the set of LP feasible solutions. So we know it is the case if I prime is equal to the empty set, but we might convexify some of the constraints, but don't gain anything with, with this reformulation. And also we would like to investigate the case when, when we obtain the integer hull with this Danzig Wolf reformulation. 
So this is what I will call the weakest and the strongest possible. So the weakest is when equality holds here, and the strongest possible case is if, uh, if equality holds on the left side. And since this is kind of hard for general integer programs, we will focus on the stable set problem, which is well understood. So we go back to the stable set problem and do the same again. So, so first of all, we have um, yeah, a graph and uh, weights on the, on the node. And we want to find a stable set or independent set or a vertex packing uh, of maximum weight. And we will call this maximum weight the weighted stability number of the graph. And we will denote it with alpha w of g. This w is this, this weight vector. So normally you should have uh, all weights equal to 1. This would be alpha of g, the stability number or the independent number. And there's this uh, stand standard uh, IP formulation. Uh, where we introduce a variable for each vertex, which, uh, and this is a binary variable, and this xv is equal to 1 if this vertex is in our stable set. And we maximize here the weight, and then we have a constraint for each edge, which basically forbids that we choose uh, two nodes that are incident to, to an edge. Um, and so we start then with this integer program, and we want to investigate then um, the, here the relation for this integer program. So we have then this integer hull is here in this context the stable set polytope. So it's the, the convex hull of all incidence vectors of stable sets. I will denote it by a step of G. Then we have here the set of LP feasible solutions is called the fractional stable set polytope and denoted by a frac of G. And here since we have a constraint for each edge, we have to choose now a subset of the, const uh, of the edges. And we will define this graph G prime on the same node set as our, uh, our graph we are interested in. And we just have the edges in E prime. And then this densic wolf polytope uh, consists of all, integer, uh, of all uh, fractional solutions where we satisfy the edge constraints corresponding to edges which are not in E prime. And X has to be in the stable set polytope of this graph G prime. So in G prime, you only, only have these edges in E prime. And this is then the, this, this uh, set X of I prime, which you've seen before. OK, um, so let's start with the investigation of the weakest possible reformulations. So when do we, don't we gain anything? And uh, there's a famous theorem by Nehmhauser and Trotter which says that the stable set polytope is equal to the fractional stable set polytope if and only if the graph G is bifurcated. So in this case, all the three polytopes we're interested in, they are all the same. And uh, we will use this theorem to, to prove the following. So um, we say that the densic wolf polytope is equal to the fractional stable set polytope. So this is the weakest possible reformulation. If and only if the graph G prime that, we, that we've chosen is bipartite. And basically, this is uh, uh, kind of easy to prove using this theorem. So I will show you a small proof sketch. So here's just the definition of the densic wolf polytope again, and the definition of the fractional stable set polytope. But here we split it the constraints into two parts, the one for edges not in E prime and the one for edges in, in, in E prime. And we can rewrite the second part just as that x has to be in the fractional stable set polytope of the graph g prime. So g prime contains all the edges in e prime. And then you can see, OK, if the, the, this red part is the same, then the blue part is the same. And the other direction is also not that hard to prove. So, so we have this equivalence. And of course, this red part holds if and only if the graph g prime is bipartite using this theorem. OK, so, so we can characterize the weakest possible reformulation for this stable set problem. Uh, and somehow the bipartite graphs play, in, uh, play an important role. So and recall that uh, yeah, a graph is bipartite if it contains no odd cycle. And we also will need the definition of an odd hole, which is an odd cycle without cause or an induced, uh, cycle, uh, an induced odd cycle. So this is an odd cycle, and if we would have this chord in our graph, then this wouldn't be an odd hole. But, uh, but this is an odd hole. And normally, you say that uh, one says that three cycles are no odd holes. But in, in this talk, I will uh, 
uh, yeah, three cycles will be odd holes. So three cycles here and odd hole, which will be important. And uh, yeah, there's this odd cycle inequality, which says that you, um, for an odd cycle, you have uh, you can choose to, uh, you have to choose less than half of the uh, nodes in this uh, odd cycle. So the sum of the uh, x v variables for for all the nodes on the cycle has to be a lower or equal to this uh, yeah to this uh, fraction. Okay. Um, okay, and let's go to the strongest possible reformulation. Um, and there we have this uh, characterization. So the densic wolf polytope is equal to the stable set polytope if and only if uh, this graph G prime contains all odd holes of the graph G. So I mean, whenever we have an edge which is part of an odd hole in the graph G, then this edge should also be in, in the graph G prime. And I will also want, I also want to show you the proof. So first, we start with the easy direction. So suppose that then the density wolf polytope is equal to the stable set polytope. Um, and let's assume that there exists an odd hole, H, which is not fully contained in the graph G prime. So I will use this subset relation. So H is not fully contained in the graph G prime. So in this uh, picture here, we have that the dashed edge is not uh, contained in the graph G prime. But we have this odd hole in our uh, original graph G. And then we can just define this uh, solution, which is one half on all the uh, vertices of this uh, odd hole and zero uh, everywhere else. And okay, this, uh, this solution obviously does not satisfy the odd cycle inequality because we choose exactly half of the uh, vertices on, uh, of this odd hole, but we have to choose less than half of the edges, uh, half of the vertices. So it's not in the stable set polytope of the graph G but it is in the densic wolf polytope. And on the one hand, it's uh, in the stable set polytope of the graph G prime. In the graph G prime, you don't have this edge. So our solution X bar is a convex combination of this purple stable set and this um, green stable set. And this uh, purple and this green stable set, they are both stable sets in the graph G prime because we don't have any chords. And here, this dashed edge is, uh, is not contained in the graph G prime. And of course, all the edge inequalities are satisfied. So this solution X bar is really uh, contained in the densic wolf polytope. And uh, yeah, this con is a contradiction um, to the assumption that, that both are the same. So the direction from the left to the right is um, yeah, not so hard to see. And uh, we will also look at the other direction. So we will now assume that the graph G prime contains all the odd holes of the graph G. And we will take some, some facet or some facet inducing inequality of the stable set polytope. So we have for each vertex uh, V, we have a coefficient pi V. And uh, yeah, the sum of the, this is lower or equal to <coughs> some value pi, Z, pi naught. And uh, we will assume that uh, this is not a trivial inequality, though, so it's not one of these inequalities that the um, variable has to be non-negative, and it's also not an edge inequality because we know that those inequalities are satisfied by all solutions in our density wolf polytope. And the idea is that we prove that uh, yeah, this inequality is also valid for <laughs> this density wolf polytope where we choose G prime to contain all <coughs> the odd holes of the graph G. And yeah, we can assume that um, all the coefficients are non-negative and that the right-hand side is positive. And also we have that this right-hand side is equal to, equal to the weighted stability number of the graph G when we have weights pi on the, no, on the vertices. So. Um, Okay, we know when we have a stable, uh, so we know that there is a solution which satisfies this inequality with the equality. So there's a solution where this inequality is tight, and this corresponds to a stable set that has, uh, yeah, that has weight pi naught. And yeah, you can't uh, go over this this pi naught because otherwise this wouldn't be a valid inequality. So 
So this really holds. And um, we're just interested in vertices with positive coefficients. Because the other one, we, we can forget they, they won't be in a, uh, or we can find maximum stable sets which do not contain those vertices. So we just look at this vertex set V0, which contains all the vertices with positive coefficient. And then we will look at the induced subgraph G0, which is induced by, by this vertex set. And we will call such a graph with weighting pi a facet graph. So basically, um, this, uh, this inequality defines also a facet of the stable set polytope of, of this graph, and all the coefficients are, are non-zero or are positive. And um, yeah, we need some other definitions. So we call an edge critical if the weighted stability number increases if we remove this edge. So somehow this edge uh, forbids um, the, uh, the weighted stability number to, to increase. And we will call a graph critical or alpha pi critical if every edge of the graph is critical with respect to, to this weighting pi. And it was proven in the PhD thesis of Sewell that there exists a spanning alpha pi critical subgraph of this facet graph, <coughs> which has the same weighted stability number. So basically, you can iteratively remove non-critical edges, and in the end, you, you will have a, a graph which only contains critical edges and has the same node set. So this is what I mean with spanning. So T0 is, uh, together with this weighting pi, uh, still a facet graph. <coughs> so this, this valid inequality is still a facet for the stable set polytope of this T0. And the idea is that we if we could prove that T0 is covered by G prime, so T0 is uh, a subgraph of, uh, sub of the graph G prime, then this inequality, okay, we know that it holds that it, it's valid for the stable set polytope of the graph T0, but then it's also valid for the stable set polytope of the graph G prime when we restrict ourselves to, to the vertices in V0. So because then G prime uh, the induced subgraph of G prime uh, that is induced by this V naught <coughs> might have, might contain more edges than T naught, but but it at least contains the edges that that we have in T naught. And yeah, by the definition of the densic wolf polytope, every solution is in this stable set polytope of the graph G prime. So if we could prove that T naught is a subgraph of the graph G prime. Um, we would be done. This, this inequality would be valid for the density wolf polytope. So we have to prove that every edge of this graph uh, T0 is part of an odd hole of the graph G0. Um, this is, uh, yeah, and when, when we have this, then we know that every edge is in the graph G prime. Okay, so we want to do this, and uh, we could prove the following lemma. So we know that there exists such a spanning alpha pi critical subgraph T0. Uh, but this lemma gives us a spanning alpha pi critical subgraph where every edge <coughs> of this subgraph is part of an out hole of this graph G0. And if I have time, I will sh show you the proof of this. But, okay, this gives us that every edge of this graph T0 is in some out hole of G0, which is an induced subgraph of G. Um, and then we have that this graph T0 is a subgraph of the graph G prime, and then we know that the inequality is satisfied. And since we have chosen the, the uh, facet or the facet-defining inequality arbitrarily, we can do this for all the facets, and we have that, that both polytopes are the same. Okay, so what we just have to prove is that, that we can find such a spanning critical subgraph where every edge is part of an odd hole of, the, of this graph G0. And there we, we will consider two cases. The first case is, um, yeah, that the, uh, the edge that we, want to, uh, that we look at is critical in the graph G0. And we will use a proof idea which also Andras Fry used in uh, a different context. But uh, yeah, so our edge which we, uh, which we consider is critical. 
And then we can take a, a maximum weighted stable set S in this graph G0, which doesn't contain U and V, the, the vertices which are incident to this edge. Uh, yeah, Sue approved this, but this is basically because um, this graph G0 with weighting pi is facet defining. Or defines this, this facet, yeah. So we have such a maximum weighted stable set where U and V are not contained in, and we then look, uh, take a uh, maximum weighted stable set S plus in this graph where we, de we deleted this one edge. And uh, since this edge was critical, we have that the weight of S plus is greater than the weight of S. And we know that U and V are both in, in this uh, stable set S plus because otherwise S plus would have been a stable set in the graph G naught. And it would then have greater weight than uh, um, a stable set with maximum weight. Okay, so it looks like this that we have on the left here. We have this stable set S without the nodes that are uh, also in S plus. So this is a stable set. On the right-hand side, we have this stable set S plus without S, which is also a stable set and contains U and V. And what we would like to find is a path here in this bipartite graph from U to V. This path would have even length. And then together with the edge E, we would uh, yeah, find an odd cycle. And if we, if we take then the shortest uh, path, we, we would find an odd hole where this edge UV is, uh, is contained in. And this is all then in the graph G0. So uh, together with the edge UV. Um, so let's just assume that U and V are in different connected components of this bipartite graph. So it looks like this, that we have U here in a connected component. Uh, then we have might, be, might have some other connected components. And then we have a connected component where V is contained in. So K1 together with K1 plus is the connected component of this bipartite graph. And since the, the weights on the right are greater than the weights on the left, then has to exist some connected component where the weight of this K2 plus is greater than, uh, or this, the weight of the KI plus has to be greater than the weight of the KI. So in this picture, it's, it's K2. So this weight is greater than, than the weight of, of this vertex set. And, but then we, we can choose a new stable set. So we take all the, um, the vertices on the left, but we replace this one. Um, um, so we have replaced this part with chi, uh, ki and ki plus. And then we would increase the weight uh, in comparison to s. And this would be a contradiction because this stable set is still a stable set in the graph g naught, And s was chosen to be. Uh, uh, stable set of maximum weight. Okay, so we know that, that U and V are in the same connected component, and so there exists a UV path in this bipartite graph, and we take the shortest one, and together with this edge UV, we get an odd hole in this graph. Okay, this was the fir first case where this edge UV is, was critical in the graph G0. And the other case is that, yeah, this edge is not critical, and then we have to assume that uh, yeah, the graph T0 is constructed um, as follows. So as I said, we can iteratively remove non-critical edges from this graph G0. And uh, yeah, if possible, we choose an edge which is not part of an odd hole. So um, whenever we have the choice to remove an edge, a non-critical edge which, which is part of an odd hole and, and a non-critical edge which, which is not part of an odd hole, we choose the, the one which is not part of an odd hole. And uh, yeah, when we assume that <coughs> um, E is not part of an odd hole, um, and um, yeah, we choose then this subset E bar, um, which is basically a subset of edges which we re removed from G0 to get to this spanning um, critical subgraph. We, we choose this E bar in such a way that E is uh, that, that E bar is minimal and E is critical in in this graph. Uh, I think.
think it should be G naught, where we deleted the, the edges in E bar. And we will then prove that there exists some edge in, in this uh, uh, set E bar together with this edge E, which is part of the knot hole. And when, when we could prove this, then this is a contradiction because then we would have removed this edge EH and not the edge E. Um, okay. So I think I will, I will skip then the part of, uh, of this proof. And uh, basically, yeah, when we prove this, then we have also the second case, and then we could prove this lemma, which was important to, um, to prove this theorem. So what we learned is that we, okay, we can characterize the weakest possible density wolf reformulation as the ones where this graph B prime is bipartite, and we obtain the stable set polytope if and only if this graph G prime <coughs> contains all odd holes of, of the graph G. So, so we have somehow the, 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 yeah, the weakest and the strongest possible, but, but we don't know what, what, hap what happens in between. So this would be interesting. Um, so how do we have to choose the graph G prime such that we obtain somehow a strong re uh, reformulation, but we don't convexify all the odd holes because this would in practice probably be, uh, be not so good. And uh, the idea is that we could convexify all the odd holes up to a particular size. So we could convexify all the odd holes of size at most k for some fixed k, or maybe <coughs> choose k um, dependent on, on the number of nodes. So convexity for all, all odd holes um, of size at most epsilon n. Okay, so this is what we want to do in the future, investigate these reformulations in between. Also because we like computations, we would like to test the density wolf reformulations in practice and extend the ideas used here um, in this work uh, to other problems which are somehow maybe related to, to the stable set problem with the ultimate goal of um, extending this to general integer programs, which 